So uh, thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, so, a bit about myself, I'm a senior data scientist at NHS England, and even though I do work for the NHS, I have no medical qualifications. Uh, I used to do maths for a living, so I have no sense of reality. And I work for in the data science team at NHS England, and we do a vast plethora of uh, topics. So, I'm now going to just discuss uh, what is data linkage in general and how does NHS England uh, do uh, data linkage. Uh, so when I talk about data linkage or data linkage, I mean taking two sources of information which relate to the same item, in this case, uh, people, and by combining the information, it is possible to identify relationships that uh, relationships between factors that would not be evidence from a single, single standalone source. An application for data linkage is research, statistics, direct care, and many other more. So the way that so the way that data linkage is set up by H in NHS England is that anyone that uses an NHS service, whether or not they are eligible to use it, is assigned an NHS number. And we as an organization have a data set called the personal demographic service. So it's a uh, so imagine a massive table with all the NHS uh, number and it's corresponding in demographic and personal information. The table itself is also version control, so we don't have to count view as well as timestamp historical uh, view. And the way that data linkage is actioned is that there is an algorithm for the master patient service or, or MPS which assigns records. Uh, with a person ID. I will discuss later that it can also uh, be the NHS number. And the person ID is universally used as a joint key for all data sets. And what I mean by that is that when we onboard a new, uh, new data assets, the person ID is found first before it's joined to other data sets within our category. So, with, so I'm going to talk about in more detail about the person ID, there's a there's a handbook uh, that anyone can, uh, if anyone's interested, in, called the person ID handbook for HES users, which spells out in much more detail and it's available in this URL link. So, what is the MPS algorithm? So, if you imagine records being inputted on a patient, patient level, uh, on, on a patient's detail list in the demographic data and personal data, the MPS algorithm. Uh, from the, uh, we'll use a uh, set of deterministic matching rules to link the inputted records to our reference data set uh, PDFs. One of them is the cross check trait, which means that the uh, NPS will try to link it using the NHS number and date of birth. And the output is a um, and the output is the person ID. So this is what a person ID looks like, and, uh, and for the sake of uh, my talk, there will be two form. We have to match uh, a person ID, which is the same as the NHS number. It doesn't, I want to have it, that it, it's not guaranteed to be uh, the NHS number, but, it, uh, but uh, most of the time it is, and uh, an unmatched form, in which case there is a U in the uh, person ID. Now, what's interesting about the person ID, now, what's interesting about the person ID is that for di is that different users, depending on uh, the application and the organizational affiliation, you see different versions of the person ID. So this is an example. Suppose that we have a ground truth of the matched person ID and the unmatched person ID. An internal analyst working on NPS, like myself, who see the unredacted versions. Of the, uh, first, of the person ID. However, for an external researcher such as a university, like a university uh, postdoc, we'll only see a pseudonymized version of it. Now, with the pseudonymized version, you can use it to join it with other data set, or you can find the frequency of this person ID within your data set. But if you notice, the metadata of the match status is lost uh, within uh, the pseudonymization. Uh, process. And we believe that this is a problem. And to demonstrate it, I'm going to present you a case study 
uh, involved in the hospital episode statistics. Uh, so, so for the uninitiated, HES can be considered as a flat table listing the episodes of, of the patient, uh, no, sorry, that lists the visits or episodes of a patient that uh, goes to a hospital trust. We consider, and for our experiment, we consider HES admitted patients care within the tax year, financial tax year of 2021 to 2022. And for our work, we, we will produce a loose, uh, loose imitation of the uh, emergency readmission spread, whereby the broad definition is that there is a uh, is that the uh, is that the patient uh, re is readmitted to hospital within thirty days of the most recent uh, discharge. So, uh, in our analysis, we will consider the readmission rates for each uh, for each trust, and the way that we're going to calculate the, the readmission rates. Is, uh, is to split it into two populations. So for every single trust, we look at the re-emission rates for the match record. So this is the sum of the match re-emissions episodes divided by the sum of the matched episodes. And we will also uh, find, uh, calculate the re-emission rate for the total number. So that's the match re emission episode divided by the sum of the total number of episodes. So that's the matched and, un and unmatched combined together. So I'm just going to go through uh, some of the results. So uh, partially the re-emissions rate on one side and just look at the unmatched and, to and total records. This is a graph that showed that each data point corresponds to a single truck, around about uh, 600, sorry, uh, 260 of them. The y-axis is a total population, so that's matched and unmatched. And the y, sorry, that's the x-axis, the y-axis is the unmatched, uh, unmatched, the number of unmatched population in the logarithmic scale. And what we notice is that there is a high variation of, uh, of the number of, un, of unmatched, uh, of unmatched records within, say, a similar size graph. So if you look at the 5,000, uh, 5,000 mark, you will find a large, uh, large variation of the same, uh, log scale, which is the mark mark. Now, let's go back to the uh, look at the readmission rate. So, this is sort of a general picture of the readmission re rate. This is a violin uh, plot that looks at the distribution of the readmission rates on our first population of the match records and on the second population, and on our second population, the uh, total uh, number of records. And what we find is that there is minimal impact if we, if we look on a national scale. However, Next slide, please. If, if we look at some of the outliers, we will see uh, we, we will see an effect. So on this table, we have a number. Of, we have the top. Uh, we have the uh, we list the five uh, five uh, trusts with the largest number of change between the two populations. So these are the total number of records, and these are not trivial uh, trivial numbers. This is the re-emissions on the match. Re emissions on the total, and what we find is that there is a is that there are large changes over five percent within uh, within the vari within the variation. However, as an external researchers, they will have no idea that the that the re emissions on the match and the percentage change uh, uh, exist because they do not have access to that metadata. So, uh, in the team, we're introducing the NPS diagnostics. Which is something like this, which is a data asset that for every single record that's pushed into the NPS al algorithm, it delivers a list of, met of metadata and contextual uh, information, including person ID type, which, which provides the ID, which provides the information whether or not the um, whether or not the uh, whether or not the, uh, the person ID matches. And users can use the NPS diagnostics, including external researchers, and in full can produce an assessment of the uncertainty and potential bias from, uh, from, data, uh, from the data leakage. Uh, five seconds. And so, the, uh, so for my talk, I've shown through my case study that there is a need to access confidential uh, data to access uh, to. Uh, oh, sorry, a need for confidential data to look at the linkage quality. But as an organization, we are custodians of patients' data. 
We need to, uh, to produce in, uh, innovation governance and protect patients' confidential, confidentiality. And the NPS diagnostics enables a bridge between the need to provide metadata information whilst maintaining the confidentiality of the patients. By having this table, you do not, uh, researchers have no need to directly access the NHS, uh, the NHS number. So uh, that's just a whirlwind for the NPS diagnostics and uh, next, next slide, please. And I'd like to say thank you and happy to receive any questions. Um, cool. So, like, uh, obviously, it's really great work. Awesome. You've spoken about it in the context of stuff that's not happening inside the NHS in the NHS, but we send quite a lot of our data currently. I don't know how long, but we still send it out to the people via DARS. Like, is that data because our via DARS linked to the NPS? And I guess, could these diagnostics be given out to those people as well? So, uh, as I mentioned, the person ID of the universe is the universal, um, it's the, the universal identifier. So if we look at HES, previously in, in HES, uh, it used to be a, a universal, the universal identifier would be the HES ID. Now that's been replaced by the, pers by the person ID, and you can look at the website to see the uh, mappings between the HES, the HES ID and the, uh, and the person ID. So this will group this, so in the future, the person ID will be Will be used to uh, as a as a um, as the uh, universal identifier, and that we have submitted uh, we have submitted a complicated form in order to make sure that such information is available for external researchers. It won't be locked up somewhere in a, in, in a cellar at NHS uh, England. Okay, I guess uh, number six on research it could be our colleagues here, like yes. people that yes. are yeah. Fine. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, how did you decide your fields to include in this book? Because I mean, you're trying to like serve users that don't know that they serve. Like, so, know. so there is a degree of practicality and uh, necessity. So, in terms of practicality, there is a limit to what kind of uh, data that we can provide if we want to, uh, because we're planning to do this retrospectively. This goes back into, uh, back to the 1980s. In order to get uh, the detailed metadata, we will need to pump by billion records into NPS again. That takes that takes, that takes uh, several months. So it's practicality, but it's also uh, necessity. So in our work, we've spoken to a wide range of stakeholders. I think Mia uh, will take credit to all, all of that work. Uh, Internal researchers, external researchers, uh, char uh, charities, in order to get what we need, and it's just a balancing act of our necessity and uh, practicality. <laughs>